Live from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank, the bank that specializes in understanding you. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio. And hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of North Fulton Business Radio. I'm John Ray, and we are broadcasting from inside Renaissance Bank in beautiful Alpharetta. And if you're tired of the big bank, mega bank experience, and you know what I mean by that, if you're at one of those banks, if you're looking for a bank that has the magic combination of size that's big enough to handle pretty much any need you can throw at them, but they're small enough to do it in a personal way, I found that at Renaissance Bank with the clients that I work with, and I think you will too. If you want to test that, go to renaissancebank.com and find one of their local offices and give them a call. It'll start with a live person answering the phone. Imagine that in these days of automation. Uh, So give them a try, and I think you'll be glad you did. Renaissance Bank, understanding you, member FDIC. And now I want to welcome Art Bottoms. Art is with B2B CFO, a partner there. Welcome, Art. Glad to be here. Thanks, John. Yeah, thanks so much for coming in. So let's talk about you and B2B CFO. How are you serving folks out there? You know, we provide CFO services for privately held businesses. Uh, we're one of the largest CFO services uh, firm in the country. Mm-hmm. You, we pretty much have partners in all the Super Bowl cities and in ah. other cities around the country. So there's not many questions that we can't get answered for our clients. So terrific. And you're so the term fractional outsourced. That's that's what uh, those terms fit. What you do. It does, but we, we consider ourselves more strategic okay. consultants. Say more about that. Uh, you know, we provide a little more strategic uh, mentoring for CEOs and CFOs for, for, for our clients. So mm-hmm. um, what makes us different is we really help them make real hard, key strategic decisions. So it's not project-based. We usually have long-term relationships mm. and provide a long-term strategic uh, guidance for, for our clients. Yeah, that's great. And talk about the value. I mean, you could be at a lot of different firms. You could be hanging out your own shingle, right? What, what's the value for you of being affiliated with B2B CFO? It's really our partners. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, uh, you know, you know, we're very picky on who we bring into the partnership mm-hmm. and, and having those resources available for our clients, it offers great value them. So like, like I was saying, there's, there's not many questions we can't, can't get answered from somebody that has years of experience, Mm. uh, in in that role or having to do with that particular issue. And, uh, no B2B CFO, you know, we have process that, that we provide to our clients. There's books available that Mm kind of outline processes. Uh, one is an exit strategy book that'll kind of outline, everything that a client would go through if, if they do decide to sell their business. And then we have other books that help them as they grow to make sure that they're maintaining cash, things of that nature and looking forward and not backwards. So, um, you know, that's, I, I love the way you ended that answer because, um, the looking forward part is what a lot of businesses have so much trouble with, Right. That's correct. I mean, they may have a great bookkeeper. Hopefully, they've got a great bookkeeper. They may have a great CFO, or I, I, I'm, pardon me, CPA, not CFO. They may have a great CPA that does all the the uh, tax returns and you know all the compliance related stuff. But that's backward looking. Exactly, and we work with great CPAs in the area mm-hmm. and, and bookkeepers. Mm-hmm. Even uh, yeah. that's not something that we do or compete with. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, so, so we're helping now when we go into a client and they need those services, you know, we can provide, uh, resources to help them get those cleaned up, Sure. but really going, looking forward and actually, you know, building forward looking thing, uh, processes based on results that they're looking for. Yeah. And that's real important today to be driving to certain results and that, that, you know, we can definitely help them with that. Yeah. That's terrific. What t- talk about the value of that uh, forward-looking, um, I guess KPI be- based 
and here I'm using lingo, key performance indicator based business that um, is managing their business that way with your assistance as opposed to the business that doesn't have that? What's the difference? You know, they increase their value more. It's, it's been my experience doing this. Um, and because you're, you're really basing key strategic decisions on building value mm-hmm. in your business. Mm-hmm. And, and most business owners, you know, their number one asset is their business. So, um, you know, taking the time and building that value is very important. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So what what are some of the issues that you're seeing with the the clients that you work with right now that are kind of common themes, Art? You, you know, there's a, a lot of things. Um, you know, a lot of my clients are looking to exit, so mm-hmm. looking to big uh, to really increase value quickly. I've got clients that are looking for bank loans and have uh, they want to make sure that they where they can fund. Uh, huge growth opportunities mm-hmm. that they have, um, and and then also I you know I have clients that, that that I come in and help them structure all their finance processes and and mentor their CFO or controller mm-hmm. uh, to to as far as going forward um, where they have great compliance and then just great uh, internal controls and process going forward where they know the numbers are correct. Mm. And what w- what are those of those three kind of big picture items, I mean, which one is the most, I guess the biggest issue that you find? You know, finding and and maintaining proper cash balances Mm. is probably the main thing that that I see out there. And and the reason for that, what, what people don't, typically what people don't understand there, when you're growing fast, you could have cash issues, right? It's not always the turnaround situation where you've got to help with cash issues. And in, in, in going back to what we were talking about, you know, planning forward mm-hmm. and not looking behind kind of keeps you out of that danger zone. Yeah, right. So, yeah, because cash is the, uh, I guess, accelerant, you might say, of growth, right? Yeah. And 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 it's it can be real easy to kind of get over your skis a little bit uh, when it comes to cash, right? That's right. There's a lot of growth opportunities for businesses out there, and a lot of them are growing fairly rapidly in certain industries. Mm -hmm. And really, they bring somebody like me in to to kind of help them go through that danger zone um, to make sure that, that they can reach those that those uh, future results uh, with with the growth opportunities that they have. So from a finance, and they typically don't have somebody on staff or anybody they could bring in that would have the experience. The many years of experience that I have, or, or our partners have at yeah. CFO. So yeah, sure. Um, Art Bottoms is with us, folks. He's a partner at B two B CFO um, here in the Metro Atlanta area. Art. He, are you, and this is not just you, but as a as a as a um, B two B CFO professional, do you provide a little bit of the maybe the sobriety, <laughs> as it were, around evaluating business opportunities? Because I can see how the business owners, by nature, they're optimistic, or they wouldn't have started that business, right? And sometimes they can look at business opportunities with rose colored glasses, and I can see how part of what you bring to the table is to, to try to bring some, some practical thinking around some opportunities. Absolutely. And that, that's a big part, uh, you know, and I'm typically working with eight to 12 clients at mm-hmm. any, any given point in time. And I would say the majority of them, you know, we're evaluating, uh, business opportunities all the time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that that's basically a, what makes us different at B2B CFO, we're able to be in those meetings and help that business owner make those strate- strategic decisions. Yeah. So, so we're not looking for typically, you know, like project-based work, things like that. Like somebody needs a forecast or budget. We want a more long-term relationship to help them grow their business and be a valued asset as they do that. Yeah. 
And, and have the cash implications of decisions are really important to understand as we talked about the value of cash. So, um, that's and that's where you come in. That's right. We, we can definitely put process in place for that. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, kind of going forward, we, we can help build teams too for, for, for the, for our clients mm-hmm. uh, with the, the vast amount of people that we work with. And that could be a CPA, it could be EOS providers, mm. it, it could be a, a lot of different uh, attorneys that we can help, uh, you know, take take their business to the next level. Yeah, so assembling that team of advisors that can help a business owner. That's what you do. Th- that's right. Yeah. And that's part of what we do. And it's real important. And, yeah. and we... Uh, you know, having the gray hair, <laughs> you you uh, have some great resources in that area to to help these companies grow. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. So, um, you talked about planning for an exit. So, talk about, I guess, the biggest mistakes that you see out there as business owners think about an exit for their business. You know. The, the biggest mistake I see is they really don't have a quarterback kind of leading the charge. Mm-hmm. Like a, a typical, like in a bigger or, bigger organization, a CFO would kind of be that point person. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what we offer. And, and the reason that's important is you, you see a lot of times where these business owners get so involved in that exit that they, they lose value in the business. Mm. In, instead of going out and getting that next big deal or that big check, they're mm-hmm. worried about selling the business. Right. And, and so they're looking, so they want to be the quarterback. They want to be able to bring the team in and stuff. And, and, and they don't have anybody to rely on them that has, have done this before. Right. And to, to help them uh, quarterback this process. And that, that's where we add a lot of value. For that and, and probably add a lot of value at the end when they exit. Yeah. By, by kind of taking that role on. Right. Right. Um, and by adding value, you're talking about real dollars. I mean, this is not some uh, pie in the sky kind of uh, concept here. We're talking about valuation and, and uh, what the business is worth and dollars that come back to the pocket of that business owner. Right. Exactly. And the thing that we, you know, I mentioned the book that mm-hmm. we have, the yep. exit planning book, but we also have software where even if they're not thinking about exi- exiting this year, they can they can ac- actually start building the processes and building everything that they need for that exit right away. Mm. And, and there's software that uh, manages that, um, and uh, and it also will help them kind of see the value as it's increasing or decreasing. Um, you know, we. Uh, it uh, it provides that so every month you're updating the numbers and you're getting evaluation and so you're you're able to gauge whether your decisions are increasing value or not. Oh wow! And we we help with that. So on the monthly meetings as we're going through the process, they're able to kind of see you know with numbers what's going on. So mm-hmm. um, and that's the way you know a lot of most CFOs I know it you know I've had a. M and A experience in my background, and that's what we always did in our companies that that I was a CFO of. Uh, we we made sure we understood the value of the business before we went to an exit. Mm, yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And w- when you can do that in ongoing real time, what that does is give you a a sense of what your priorities should be in terms of your management tension, right? Absolutely, yeah. and and it sh- it also you know it shows what results worked and what what didn't, mm-hmm. um, and it gives you, um, it, and and then you're monitoring that monthly, right? And yeah. then and then the software also helps build up those teams that you're going to need when you exit, and it's gonna it's gonna actually put accountability on certain people, and you're going to be able to manage that through the software the business owner would. Mm. It's great software. I mean, most people that look at it uh, um, want it, to be yep. honest. And, uh, yep. It's real impressive. So. Yeah. And so this is uh, software available through B2B CFO. That there was part of the resources you can call on. Exactly. And then what, what it does, it, you have to have a partner that, mm-hmm. that uh, helps you get that. And okay. the reason for that is 
when you set that valuation, you need some guidance on how to do that with adjustments uh, for adjusted EBITDA and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, it it does require some meetings to get it set up correctly. But once it's set up correctly, uh, uh, the business owner is able to run that. Oh, wow. Uh, Yeah, that's terrific. So, Art, talk about the, um, I guess, the as a business owner goes for an exit, first of all, like what, what, what kind of time frame should they be thinking of in terms of preparation? Let's talk about that first. You, you know, it's been my experience that, that most business owners are thinking about exit all the time, right? Now the time frame to, to, to have a successful exit, you probably want to give yourself two to three years if, if you're looking to do it. Uh, just to get everything in place, but mm-hmm. I've seen exits done a lot quicker than that. Mm. Um, and and but but you want to be thinking about it all the time. I think as a business owner, because you know certain things happen in the market in the marketplace that might dictate that it might be something that you do now. I actually had a client uh, that was looking uh, to sell his business for a certain amount, and you know we sat down. Within a month of engage, being engaged with him, you know, we found out that his company was already worth that. And so, oh, really? So where he thought he had a two to three year period, that business sold in six months. There's a happy so, business owner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he did. He, he didn't have uh, a good feel of how you valued the business and, uh-huh. and how you put the processes together. But once we did that, he was able to sell that business fairly quickly. Gotcha. Um. Now, what what role do you have in the um, once a business owner starts moving toward that process? I mean, I know you're not an investment banker or business broker, but what 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 continued role do you have as they as they go through an exit process? Because there's a, it's really important to have that CFO right there on the case, right? Exactly, just being the quarterback, putting the data room together, helping mm-hmm. them do that, and and setting up, you know, bring, bringing the team together and kind of coordinating the meetings and coordinating what has to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are just kind of coordinating and being the point person is kind of what, uh, where, where I see my value yeah. and, and where our partners, uh, see their value. Yeah. Is. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so any particular industries that are particular fits for you or what, what does that look like in your practice? You know, my, my practice, I, I, I'm in uh, technology. I have technology and business-to-business services clients mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is one, one aspect. I have a lot of clients that, in that construction and then manufacturing are, are kind of mine. Now, B2B CFO, we have nine partners in the Atlanta area, and we cover pretty much in, every industry that's out there. Yeah. So, and, and, and if we have any questions, if there's like a, a niche industry, we probably can get questions answered uh, through one of the partners across, across the country. Um, and, uh, but yeah, those are kind of my, my you know, my, my four big ones, technology, business to business services, construction and manufacturing. Got it. Got it. All four of which are very vital and important in the Atlanta area for sure. They are, and, yeah. it, and it's, uh, you know, I step back from time to time, and it's kind of a who's who. Like, I could mention what my clients do, and I, I bet it touches everybody that's listening to this some way. One, one or two or three or even four of my clients yeah. uh, probably run across my across these guys yeah. in the Atlanta area. So, Yeah, for sure. That's, uh, that's uh, terrific. Congratulations on that. So w- w- your um, – I would love it maybe if you could share a success story, uh, a story of, of you don't have to mention names, of course, but a story that helps illustrate the great work that you do and results you bring for clients. Well, you know, one that comes to mind was during COVID. Um, mm-hmm. And it was more mentoring the CEO and kind of being his CFO through mm-hmm. that process and he had bought uh, the business from his uh, partners, and it was uh, he, he probably. And what happened was they got in an argument. He actually uh, had a bad attorney, and basically they got a million dollar garnishment 
uh, based on uh, the purchase of the business right during COVID. Oh, the, boy. We didn't have the cash. Uh, the bank was upset, and we had to work through that. Yeah. And in very hard times, worked through it, and now that company is is doing extremely well. It's great growth opportunities. It has roughly uh, has opportunities. It, it's grown 50% since he bought it, month-over-month month revenue, and then our, our, it's grown 50% year-over-year. And then he's got an opportunity to take some of what he does national, where this is going, it's going to be triple in the next two years. It's oh wow! Huge growth. They they do they offer services that a lot of people would, would uh, run across every day. Mm-hmm. They're in uh, big box retailers and doing extremely well. But you know that was one where he was calling me every day, and and you know we were a lot of discussions on and and. and uh, but we got through it, so that was uh, a big win. Because you know, the one reason I do this, you know, I enjoy working with these business owners, mm-hmm. and always have. In my whole career, you know, two years out of college, you know, I was the CFO for a company this size. You know, I typically work with companies in that five to hundred million in revenue size, right? Privately held businesses, and that's been my whole career, mm-hmm. and and I really. You know, my passion is helping those guys kind of reach their dreams and get where they want to go. So, um, you know, so when a story like that, uh, you know, I've had companies that have exit, exited, made a lot of money, but you know that being in in the, in that fight day to day and winning that was uh, yeah, great. yeah, that's that's awesome. Now, you know, one thing I wanted to ask, I meant to ask you before when we were talking about good client fits and you mentioning your company growing nationally, do you work with clients all over? I mean, does it really matter where they're located or are you focused more in this area? You know, most of my clients are in this area, it, but I have had clients in Connecticut, for example. Okay. And, uh, you know, we can work with clients all over the country mm-hmm. and, and we can also find partners all over the uh, country to help clients if, if, if they want somebody local. Right. And that's the great thing about our firm. And we've got great partners. Yeah. And like I said, you know, there's a, uh, a a great screening process where we have really guys that have really uh, achieved results and uh, yeah, have done great things in their career. So. Yeah, that's terrific. Art Bottoms, folks, B2B CFO. He's a partner with this national uh, CFO firm. So, uh, Art, this has been great. I can't imagine there, there aren't some folks that want to learn more about you and your services. So let's give them a directions on how to find you. you you can you can find me at our website at www.b2bcfo.com and then and then uh, or you can email me at artbottoms at b2bcfo.com and uh you know i'd be happy to provide anybody that contacts me with one of our books if mm-hmm. they have uh any Concerns about cash flow or exiting, we've got great books that describe that. I'd love to uh, make that offer. I'd be happy to send it to them. Yeah, terrific. Art Bottoms, partner, B2B CFO. Art, Art, this has been great. I can't uh, tell you how much we've enjoyed it, and I'm delighted we could shine the light on the great work you're doing. Congratulations on that work. Ah, Thank you very much. It's been great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you, Art. Hey, folks, just a uh, quick reminder now. Okay, so you've got your financials all taken care of and your your, your strategy set with uh, a good, great professional like Art Bottoms, but uh, you still got some issues in your business <laughs> around administrative tasks that are just driving you nuts. Well, I've got a solution for you. Office Angels has a whole team of angels that fly in get that work done and fly out. And they do it on an ongoing or as needed basis. So if you've got administrative tasks, bookkeeping, uh, maybe some marketing uh, issues that you need someone else to take off your plate, Office Angels can do it for you and they can restore the joy to your business. Um, Give them a call 678-528-0500. Or go to officeangels.us, but I suggest just picking up the phone and calling them, and I think you'll be glad you did. And I can speak from my own personal experience with them. They do great work. They help me in my business, and they're fantastic. 
Uh, coming up later this year, I'm releasing a book called The Price and Value Journey, Raising Your Confidence, Your Value, and Your Prices Using the Generosity Mindset Method. If you're a professional services provider struggling with your pricing, this may be a book you're interested in. So go to pricevaluejourney.com to sign up for updates as the release gets closer and to get more information there. And just a big thank you to our audience. So we're coming up on show number 700 for North Fulton Business Radio, and we've only um, been able to get this far because of you. You have supported us tremendously over the years, and one of the ways you continue to do that is by supporting us on social media and sharing the show. Uh, So if you've heard something here that makes you want to share the show, please do so. Um, that's how we get the word out on the great work of business leaders like Art and the other, uh, uh, well, guests too numerous to count, frankly, <laughs> that uh, we've had over the years. So uh, we we rely on you to help us fulfill our mission to be the voice of business in the North Fulton region, and we are grateful for you. I'm grateful. Thank you. So for my guest, Art Bottoms, I'm John Ray. Join us next time here on North Fulton Business Radio.